All right, welcome back. Now, mental illness remains one of the issues that has been clouded by stigma and myths. From utter ignorance to lack of proper structures, patients have been treated to some inhumane ways, including being chained and locked up for years, having their rights taken away from them. As the world marks the World Health Day this month, there is need for the government to step up its role in maintaining a stable mental health campaign. Under this year's theme, Mental Health and Older Adults, we want to find out what can we do to handle mental health more appropriately. Of course, to tell us more about that is uh, Dr. Catherine Muticia, a psychiatrist. Welcome to the Power Breakfast. Of course, this is not the first time. Thank you. You were here, of course, mm -hmm. still uh, looking at the road to recovery, especially yes. what happened at Westgate Mall. But perhaps generally, how significant is this day? World Mental Health Day. How significant is this, especially in regards to our Kenyan okay. population? Yeah, the World Mental Health Day is celebrated every year mm. internationally. Mm -hmm. And uh, the actual celebrations are actually held on 10th. But before then, the, the, those last two weeks, we go out and uh, sensitize the public, tell them about mental health and mental illnesses. Like we've also been having medical camps and we also have media briefing. The eventual uh, celebrations on 10th, we hope to have a media briefing, breakfast media briefing, which is being organized by the Director of Mental Health in Kenya. And um, for Madari Hospital, we've been in the limelight for the wrong reasons exactly. in the past. <laughs> Absolutely. That's a concern. And we chose to have an open day tomorrow mm -hmm. on 4th mm -hmm. to have the public and the stakeholders basically the relatives of patients and the patients who are seen as outpatient who are at home to just come visit with us see what we are doing the challenges how we are handling our challenges and we open the media you know the, the, the media oh, has always felt the that this something we hide in Madari. So they are welcome, come and see and show the public that despite the challenges we are, we are having, we are doing our best. Mm -hmm. yes. Of course this is a step forward in terms of creating awareness, you know, open day, go visit Madari Hospital. But perhaps generally, what have you done to address the stigma that surrounds people who uh, have mental illnesses mm -hmm. and even the myths that, you know, when you see somebody who has a mental illness, uh, it's because of a witchcraft syndicate mm -hmm. somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yes, you are right. There's a lot of stigma when it comes to mental illnesses. There are many people we treat, but they wouldn't want to say that they have been treated. Mm -hmm. And so the people who would be adv advocating would not want to be known. They are even seeing a psychiatrist or they are visiting a mental hospital. But tomorrow we will be having real life experiences of people uh, who have lived with mental illnesses, discussing about it, saying what they have gone through. And, and encouraging the public that indeed mental illness can affect any of us. It cuts across the cultures, it cuts across the socioeconomic status. It doesn't affect the poor alone, it affects everybody. And uh, we, we encourage uh, people who might uh, come into contact with somebody with mental illness to really be supportive. It can affect any of us. Just like the other day, we were at, uh, we, the Kenya was hit by the the terror attack at Westgate, we know that uh, as a result of that, some people may suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder, they may suffer from depression, they may suffer from other forms of anxiety. So it can be any of us. And you know, when it comes to adversities, when adversities, adversities hit people, some people will react, uh, 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 might end up getting a mental illness. So le let's move out from the cocoon. Let people know that mental illness is an illness like any other. Let people know that now we have more medication and people can take medication and work and live uh, a normal life. Well, the, there is yes. a reality in society that perhaps we've tried to handle, but uh, it seems to still strive. The fact that um, a family might have a person, one of their loved ones, who has a mental illness, and all that they can do is lock them up, chain them up, because of the shame of mm. being associated to a person who has a mental illness. How are you reaching out to such people? Yes, that sadly happens. And uh, the Ministry of Health uh, has been through the community workers and through the health centers. The government trains uh, community health workers who go for outreach in the community. And when they find such people, 
uh, they are able to bring them to hospital for treatment. They are able to use the social workers and even the office of the chiefs to reach the, the families and discuss with them and advise them that the best thing would be to have this person treated. But we all know the challenges facing Kenyans. You know, there are places where even to afford the cost sharing money needed in the hospitals, they do not have it. Although all government hospitals should waive Kenyans who are not able to to meet the cost. We know that even uh, logistics, like a mother who has to choose between going to work and bring money to feed the family and taking the child to hospital or uh, having to sit down and take care of the patient, it's really a, a, a challenge. But we are doing our best. We are happy that even the, the government uh, elevated Madari Hospital to be a national referral hospital of men mental illness. And with that came even extra location. And so we are saying in future you're going to see even Madari Hospital improve this extra location. I also want to, to really salute Kenyans who have come up as friends of Madari Hospital Initiative. We have a group, we had uh, a company which came and put mattresses, uh, replaced the whole hospital, hold mattresses. We have Safaricom who have offered to furnish the whole hospital, give us furniture. And they came and surveyed and said, look, we can't just bring uh, furniture. We need to also come and paint the hospital. So we are very well wishers. The whole St. Cathedral the other day came there and donated equipment worth more than a million to repair beds which were dilapidated. So we are seeing a lot of uh, goodwill from Kenyans and we are encouraging people, corporates, to join with the Friends of Madare Hospital Initiative to be able to help in the areas which the government is not able to reach. And we also uh, salute the government for having increased their location to Madari Hospital and having recognized it as a national hospital. Mm -hmm. yes. Perhaps you could tell us, because I believe there are people who of, of great concern who would uh, want to visit uh, Madari Hospital tomorrow during the open day. Mm -hmm. What has been done mm -hmm. and what needs to be done? Mm -hmm. You could tell us that. Basically, uh, through the management, we've been able to do several uh, restructuring We've been able to motivate our staffs because our staffs also, when they see the negative media reports and, and public looking at Madari Hospital, like the staffs who are there are, are not doing what they should do, when the actual sense, the, the main problem is actually resource and uh, over understaffing. So we've had to motivate them. We've done several restructuring. Of course, the physical uh, infrastructure, we are improving. We've improved the meals of the patients. And there's a lot which is uh, going on. As much as we know uh, the allocation coming from the ministry hasn't actually reached the ground, as much as we know the paperwork is done but the money hasn't yet reached, but we've done a lot to improve the hospital. Mm. So what yes. needs to be done that has not been done? Mm -hmm. So basically the building was uh, constructed actually as an asylum many years ago, 1910, and the buildings are dilapidated. We have a master plan of uh, building a new neuropsychiatric hospital in phases because, of course, we can't close the hospital and send patients away. So we have a master plan where we, we, we plan to build the hospital in phases. We start with outpatient, we go to the wards, we go to other departments, the ECT machine for the more severe mental illnesses, ECT uh, theater for more severe mental illnesses. And that has been in place for over five years. It was started at the time when uh, Honorable Kiapi was uh, the mm -hmm. PS. Mm -hmm. And uh, we want it to pick up so that we can actually have a facility which is not dilapidated. And that will minimize the cost of repairing every day. And, and of course, that will also motivate when you go to a ward and you find that there's mm -hmm. no room for the staffs of there's no room for the uh, if you have three doctors to sit and see patients and the f uh, basic amenities are dilapidated in terms of even the the bathrooms and the the the, the showers so we th that would actually be the ultimate um, um, uh, vision for us to have a new neuropsychiatric hospital but again we also um, um, understand that we also need to keep a uh, doing our part, those who are in the management and the leadership. Because you can have a nice building, you can have all the resources, but if they are not managed well, then we don't deliver what we are supposed to deliver. Mm. So we are also strengthening the leadership mm. also. What about uh, the personnel, the staff working there? Do you see an influx of people wanting to join the industry to serve? Mm -hmm. Yes. O when, when we talk of stigmatization of mental illness, it goes back even to the mental health workers because we find that few people are coming in mm -hmm. to do psychiatry 
to specialize in psychiatry. Few people are coming in to specialize in psychiatric nurses. The, the ministry has not yet employed any uh, uh, psychotherapist and uh, psychologist. And so the psychologists who work in Madare, they volunteer. And we have people with very big hearts. We have a clinic which runs every Thursday, and it's run by volunteer psychologists mm -hmm. who help our patients. So again, um, the staffs, we are seeing people getting interested, but again, the stigma beats them up. And until we fight the stigma, we can't see uh, enough workforce mm -hmm. to meet the need. Right. Yes. Uh, perhaps in relation to uh, this year's World Mental Health uh, theme, mm -hmm. uh, mental health and older adults. Mm -hmm. uh, generally, when you look at uh, a senior citizen behaving uh, totally in an indifferent manner, most of the times we think it's just part of growth and development and many people, many young people uh, have that thought, perhaps one day I will get there. But we never look at it from a mental illness perspective. Perhaps you could tell us more about that. Yes, you are right. This year's theme being mental health and older persons, we realize that in Kenya, uh, people think that uh, every older person must develop uh, dementia or mm. memory loss. Mm -hmm. And so they say it is Uze. But we know that there's a condition called dementia mm -hmm. which affects uh, older people, not really because of the age. And uh, we, we realize that this is a challenge because eventually there's no treatment to cure dementia and there's a lot of nursing care needed. There's uh, very minimal support because in the Western countries you find there are homes where people can be assisted to take care of their loved ones. Because you find a person who loses memory to the extent that they can't remember their own family, they will f take lunch and forget that they took lunch, and, and they will ask, why haven't you given me lunch? They'll forget even where their bedroom is, where the toilet is. If they get out of the gate, they will get lost. So that is a condition which uh, basically as much as we give drugs to reduce the rate of progression, there's no cure for it. So. Kenyans need to be sensitized that uh, old age is not synonymous to memory loss. And so when they see their old person losing memory, they need to have treatment sought for, for it. Depression also, you know, as our, uh, our, our country becomes industrialized, we are seeing old people being neglected, being left alone. So again, that leads to depression and anxiety. So Kenyans need to reach out to that. Again, the issue of Muchawi, you know, mm -hmm. uh, there are places in the country where um, uh, old people are accused of being yeah, witches. Witch, yeah. And some have even been molested, exactly. subjected to mob injustice. Mm -hmm. So we actually encourage Kenyans. I, I don't... I may not have uh, enough information as to whether such accusations are right or wrong, but again, we tend to feel that we rarely see young people being accused of being mm -hmm. witch. Sometimes it might just be the stigma of old age and feeling that you have uh, you are past your cell date uh, time mm -hmm. and people stigmatizing you for your age. And yet we know in the olden days, the older people were given a lot of respect. They were given the role of advising. And even now we are seeing people retiring at 60 and they are still have a lot of energy and they have a lot of experience. And that's why the government extended even the retirement age from 55 to 60. Because they realized that even uh, at 60 you can still be, you have a lot of experience and that experience shouldn't go down the drain. Mm -hmm. Yes. Perhaps you could tell us a bit about, you know, self-help practices that mm -hmm. uh, people can actually implement mm -hmm. uh, to protect themselves from situations where they might uh, get mental illnesses even as they continue on with their lives. Yes. Basically, we say that uh, there's no health without mental health. So you can't say you're healthy because the definition of WHO uh, of, of health, you have to be physically, mentally, even socially, even mm -hmm. spiritually stable for us to say you're healthy. So you cannot also be mentally healthy if you're not physically healthy. So we have to improve all aspects of health. People need to phys exercise physically. They need to control uh, diseases which come later on with age, like diabetes, hypertension, check your cholesterol level, check your blood sugar, and above all, uh, watch on your mental, uh, mental health. Live positively, make sure you have social contacts, because when you isolate yourself and then adversities come, then it becomes very difficult to survive. And so social support is very important in prevention of mental illnesses. And then the other issue is to just make sure that when you see people behavior changing, their emotions changing, that you advise them or help them seek help. Unfortunately, most of the mental illnesses, the person suffering from it might not actually realize that they are sick. And it causes the people around them to actually 
have them seek treatment because they'll think everything is normal. Mm -hmm. yes. Perhaps uh, you, we could also mention something that really happens, and this is a, a very unfortunate thing, the economic, the economic differences, especially looking at uh, rural and urban areas. Mm -hmm. In urban areas, of course, it's easy for one person, depending on how affluent they are, to take their loved ones or even to uh, have access to uh, medical services. But what of those in the rural areas? What really happens and how are you reaching out to them? I agree with you because even when you look at uh, the number of psychiatrists and psychologists, majority are concentrated in the urban areas and very few in the periphery. But the, the Ministry of Health has trained many nurses and many clinical officers through, they have even recalled the ones on service to come back for a retraining to be able to diagnose mental illnesses and actually treat them, treat them. Before this never used to happen. So we are finding that even the nurses in the health centers, in the dispensaries, they are actually able to diagnose, treat what they are able to treat and refer. So again, if you have suspect that your loved one might be suffering from the mental illnesses, go to the nearest hospital, even a dispensary. The nurse who is there or the clinic officer who is not there, they'll be able to treat what they're able to treat, and whatever they're not able to treat, they'll refer you. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Perhaps as we wind up, um, you could just clarify the place of the name that we should use. Of course, mm -hmm. this has been a debatable issue because other people use, you know, statements like disability mm -hmm. but then we are told say pe persons with disability mm -hmm. in this context many people have been insulted mm -hmm. like you go to madari mm -hmm. and it's part of mm -hmm. an insult mm -hmm. and not necessarily focusing on this is a condition that we need to really appreciate and take care of people who have such conditions what is the way forward in terms of our general perspective of mental illness in this country mm -hmm. Yes, that is very unfortunate that people will always joke around <laughs> of with Madare case, your right. Madare case, and that puts the people who have sought treatment there in a very difficult situation. We have people struggling. What letter are you sending to my employer when, when I'm discharged and uh, I want to go I back to, to work? Mm -hmm. What letter are you sending? If it's, they see Madare hospital, how will they start looking at me? Will they discriminate on me? And that is very sad. When we know very well that mental illness can affect any, any of us, and you find people going to spend a lot of money in the private sector rather than going to the government facilities because they know in the private sector the letterhead they'll get might not point out that they have a mental illness. So it's a challenge and we need to challenge people that it can affect any of us. And the fact that uh, somebody has been treated uh, for mental illness. It doesn't make them different from somebody who is being treated for diabetes mm. or even somebody being treated for HIV. They are all chronic illnesses and we need to support them. And uh, we, we see Families who have had one of them suffer from mental illness, they actually realize that. A and then they, they know now that this is not a joke, it can affect any of us. And we are very senior people who have even suffered from mental illnesses. Their family members have suffered from men mental illnesses. We see even in Mother Hospital, People come in to see their relatives, but they will not get out and talk about it because of the stigma. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Many thanks indeed. Talking to uh, Dr. Catherine Muticia, who is a psychiatrist. Thank you so much indeed for being part of the Palm Breakfast Show. It's been a great honor serving you this morning. Let's meet tomorrow, Friday, as God wills, for more.